You only have two runs for the rest of your career to make sure that you execute and put this on your resume as your best 40 you've ever run your entire life. I talked to him about taking the breaks off the beginning. And so the start, there are no breaks. There are no stops. It's all go. In the middle of the 40, I tell them to melt the middle down. So we're coming in hot like butter. On the back end, we want to blaze the back end, just fire on the back end. So I think that sort of resonates with the guys as they're running through to understand that we're going to have to be fast from the very beginning of the 40. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it, arms. Yeah. I'm not no average speed receiver as a 4-5, 4-4. Some people got me running a 4-5, and I just want to show people that I'm way faster than a 4-5. That's See better. That's See better. you later. That's better. If I'm in my stunt position and I'm down here, right, once I take off, where my hips going to go? They're going to come up here to where I run. So let's start with the hips in the position where you run already. Athletes have started to understand that there's a real technique to sprinting in the 40-yard dash. When we're talking about 4-3, 4-2 speed, inches matter. I'm looking to run a 4-3-4 out of combine. And they go right back to him again. Able to beat him in in space down the sideline. Jerry Judy, what an effort. One of the best ever at wide receiver for the Crimson Tide. Speed is everything. The 40-yard dash has always been a marquee event for the, the executives and the scouts. They want to know and have these guys prove that what they see on the field is what they're going to see in this 40-yard dash. The 40 is important. Being the receiver, everybody wants to see how fast you run. We had Miko Hardman last year and ran 4-3-3 electronic. Some scouts had him at 4-2-6, 4-2-9. Um, you see this kid that's going out on the field and running some of the fastest miles per hour in the league this year. Blitz. Mahomes jumps in the air and completes it. Look out! Afterburner time! Hardman to the end zone for the touchdown. The 40-yard dash was huge in his selection being so high uh, for the Chiefs this year. Now guys know you need to train for this in order to really allow your true speed to shine. So training you know, NFL guys for the 40 is very much from a mental standpoint like preparing for the Olympic Games. And that's a difference you know, that NFL prospects need to understand. Having played football, and they're great football players, you know, they're used to being able to make adjustments after a play, make an adjustment at the half. You don't get that opportunity in Olympic sprinting, and you don't get that opportunity at the combine. Having Michael Johnson's presence here in the facility is huge. I mean, you're talking about a guy, former world record holder in two events. It gives us our, our passion. It gives us our mindset, the way we think. The expectation is to be world class. On, on, on. Yes, sir. We beat it. So they train six days a week. Three of those days are what we call double days, intensive days. And so Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're going to do two times a day. We break it down. We always do our movements in the morning. We do lifting in the afternoon. On Tuesday, Thursday, we, we put in some recovery elements for them to recover. On Saturday, we do half a day on Saturday. So it's an intensive load. I learned a lot more about technique, just the, the way your foot placement is, your stance, stuff like that. We spend three days out of the week working on the linear elements of the 40-yard dash. We break it up into starts, acceleration, and max velocity. We spend a lot of time over those three days focusing in on posture and setup for the start because these guys don't have any, any formal training and start mechanics and what it should look like, what it should feel like. So we try to really provide a lot of time focusing on that element of it. Lever. Good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we see tremendous results in the first two weeks just getting these guys technically more sound and comfortable getting into posture and position. We started out a few years back really honing in on a pre-training circuit just to kind of get these guys prepped up. We want to make sure soft tissue wise, guys' range of motions are healthy, blood is starting to flow. Before we even get on the floor and do a typical dynamic warm up, they're, they're getting prepped up to perform. And then we go through a dynamic warm up that's very specific to the day. So if we're working on linear elements or max velocity elements, you're going to see some of those components in our dynamic warm up. From there, we start to focus right in on the speed part. And so we'll do a very quick schooling, technical acquisition, and then we've got to run. The best way to learn how to run fast is to run fast often. And so we take our guys through a lot of repetitions of high velocity. 
we feel like that's the best way to get the, the, the technical aspects of it and the performance aspects to level up quickly. And that's every day. And so we'll, we'll start with that same format, that same flow, so guys get accustomed to it, they memorize it, and they're able to execute it on their own by about week six. Get your lift. Lever arm. Say rolling. See, see rolling? Yep. Right, you gotta, that you gotta help me push that hand. But they're not gonna allow that. They're not gonna allow that. And yep. it's just like, so if you were, if you were gonna dunk a ball, a basketball, right? When you run it down the court, you don't just run off of that dunk, right? You plant. That's where the explosion comes from. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna hit you with a slingshot, I'm not gonna just let it go, right? I'm gonna hold it, pull it back, and I'm gonna hold it, because that's where that power's gonna come from. So you gotta hold that. I think we can get a little bit deeper there too. Right? So watch when it goes. So you know you're not in a great position to take off, right? That's a good position, but your body as an athlete knows this is a better position, this is a better position, this yeah. is a great position, yep. right? That's where it wants to be. It yep. wants to be here. Setup is everything. We teach a four-stage component. We want guys to load the line. We want them to lift their hips up, get their center of gravity up a little bit. We want that off arm to become a lever, and then we want them to launch out of the hole. Lever. Sweep back, good. Both feet up. Power leg goes back first, so left leg is there. Drop in zone, right knee. Three zones, we can drop the right knee in. Toe, ball, foot, or arch. Go ahead and drop it into the ball foot. Yep, we're gonna load both hands on top of the line. Yep, so key number one is to load forward. From here, we wanna lift upwards. Good, the lever arm is gonna be this off arm right here. We want that off arm to be up, long, right there. Thousand one, thousand two, then we launch. Step out one step. Ready? And go. Good. And so it's those four things that we really try to put into a system so that guys can replicate that same action over and over. From a power standpoint, though, every, every step should feel the same. So the amount of power that's going into the ground on each step should feel the same. But it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? OK? So I'm putting this foot down quicker, then I put the last one down. Quicker, then I put the last one down quicker. Quicker, 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 OK? All right? It's just, it's just thinking that way, OK? But make sure that every step, though, same amount of power so that it's not off balance, OK? So we talked about melting the middle down. The sled is what helps us to run more powerfully in the middle of the 40-yard dash. Tag push. Set up the technique. I execute. Ready. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Arms. Yeah. Good run. We do sleds a, a minimum of one time a week. Sometimes we'll go up to twice a week with sleds. I mean, we like to pull them pretty heavy. You know, we're going to take a percentage of their body weight and really work off a percentage of max velocity um, to tell us how much load to put on the sleds. And research has proven that it's going to be optimizing the power. The power is really in that middle part of that 40. So that's why our guys run pretty fast, because we do a lot of sled training. Push. During the middle of the race, it's different than a 100 meter dash. You've got to get up a little bit quicker in the 40. So from about 8 to 12 yards, we've got to start seeing you rise up and get into some of these top end speed mechanic type positions. And then from 20 to 40, can you hold on to that velocity? Once you hit peak speed, you usually start to go down. We want our guys to be able to hold it on the back end. You're not trying to do something. You're just doing what you normally do. So what you're doing now is trying to stay low by tucking his chin. You normally don't walk around like that. Right? You just walk like this, right? So you're gonna get in the start position, you're gonna get up and run the same way. Just, you know, keep your head where it normally would be, okay? All right? So what you will see is that he started off here, and as soon as he started, it went down, but then he realized it and he came he back, it back up. up. Yep. So it would look good out here, but there you will see in yep. one little part there. Is this it? This is it. Yeah. I think that position is already yeah, better up. with the eyes. Right. Now yep. watch when you run it, what happens? Look at it. Right yep. there. Yep. Right? Yep. But then yep. it comes back up. Keep running yep. it. Keep running it. Then it comes back yep. up. Yeah. Right? Yep. 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 That's good. So I like That's that. That's perfect. But then, yeah, that's perfect. Now look what you did. You moved it. Right here, you moved it. Right there. That's where Go you should have been the whole time. Yep. Right here. Just keep that up. Now you bring, see, see where you brought your head back up? Yeah. So just keep it up the whole time, right where it should be right here. Just try to, like, 
make sure you're not tucking that chin, which is a habit, right? But you almost had it there. So it's very complex. There are a lot of different parts in there, but we're just looking at it from the standpoint of, from the moment you, you know, get to the line and, and even in your approach to the line to the moment you cross the finish line, there's opportunities in all of that for us to shave off time. So we're looking at every step of that process and any step of that process where we can shave off some time, we're going to focus on it. Jerry Jude is an extremely special athlete. He's very twitchy. We've seen it on film. Clean pocket for Tua to the end zone. Touchdown! Jerry Judy again! When he came in and, and toured this facility, one of the things he told me is I want to work on my separation. I went back and watched some of the video. I was like, I, I think you separate really well on the field. I think that's probably not the issue. Where the issue lied was getting into a, a technical start position. Once we were able to get him there, he's electric coming out of it. I mean, one of the fastest guys from zero to five that we've ever seen in this facility. He just has a certain amount of innate natural ability that comes with the entire package. Guys like that are dreams for coaches to work with because if we can put them inside of a system and give them the right mechanics at the right time, put them in great postures and alignments, those guys take off and they run really, really well. So he's, uh, he's one of the best I've seen. Boom, okay, this is one thing we talked about today. This is good. This is a good opening. Your shins are pretty much parallel to each other. You got a nice projection angle. The eyes could be a little bit more in front. Backside arm is big, gives us time to unpack. I like that shallow in the front so we're quick, okay? What can be better, and this is elite, elite level, this angle can be more shallow. So this is what I was talking about, that over flex. This is what I'm talking about. Lower. Lower, yeah. So what that does, that takes that knee and puts it here. It's only seven degrees. We're talking a matter of inches now. When we're talking about four, three, four, two speed, inches matter, okay? So we can cut seven degrees off of that, make that 100 degree, now these shin angles are the exact same. I'm gonna get to the floor a little bit sooner, okay? The start, the start position doesn't translate for the skill position at all. They, they're never gonna be in a three-point stance with those deeper shin angles. But once they start to get up, all of that translates. So I would say from five to 40, all of that translates to football speed. It's guys that once they get to that seven sign that we looked at, how quickly can you get your foot down? We've looked at metrics that say, you gotta get down in .06 to the floor. Well, it's the same thing if a receiver's coming out of a break and I break and my leg hangs in the air, that's too much of a float. I've gotta be able to put my foot into the ground, stab it, and then punch down with the opposite leg. So those elements carry over directly from sprint training. With Jerry, it's gonna be on the front end. It's really gonna be zero to five. I think we've already cut probably, probably 0.15 from zero to five on his time right now. He's already fast on the back end, fast enough to run some of the best times at the combine. Not a lot of work needs to be done there. Just need to make sure that we can handle that velocity coming in. But it's all in his zero to five. So if we do that right, he's gonna run a really good time. And Jerry has his own uniqueness. Uh, one of the things that we're working with him on is in the drive phase, trying to make sure that we really leverage his ability. He's, he's quick once he gets into the drive, but we can be faster by ex in exhibiting more power during that phase, during the drive phase. And so that's something that, that we're working with him on. The start, the, the most important part of the 40. Once you get that start, everything else is smooth transition. It, it's really my lean and my second step. I got the first step is butter, it's smooth, but the second step, I'm trying to get it underneath me so I could build that vo velocity to push me more um, horizontal so I could bring that power. I mean, he's a fast guy, and what fast guys do is they run fast. And so I don't know what time he's going to put down, I just know it's going to be one of the best at the combine. We're going to work on executing, making sure that he reaches his full potential. And that's one of our mission statements here is I want to make sure that he doesn't leave anything in the bank. You only have two runs for the rest of your career to make sure that you execute and put this on your resume as your best 40 you've ever run your entire life.